Good morning, everyone. Um, we are here at Mystic Fitness for a beautiful Monday morning yoga flow. My name is Marina. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, let's close our eyes, get in a comfortable seated position. Let your body relax. Take some deep belly breaths. Relax your shoulders. Find space. Let your breath get deeper. And let's leave some of the baggage that we brought into the room at bay. This is time to be focused on your breath, on your body on this time that you're giving yourself. There is nothing else that needs to be thought about. And we're gonna inhale for a count of four as we tilt our heads back, then put our tongues to the roof of our mouth. So I'll walk you through that. So one, two, three, four, tilt your head back, put your tongue at the roof of your mouth, one, two, three, and four, and release for one, two, three, four, as you bring your chin to your chest and hold with no air for two, three, and four, and let's do that a few more times, inhale and tilt your head back, two, three, and four. Lock that oxygen in there with your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Three, and four, and release for one, two, three, and four. Chin to chest and hold. Three, and four. And let's do that two more times and inhale. Two, three, and four. Tilt the head back. Lock your tongue. Three, and four. And release as you come down. Two, three, and four. And leave the lungs with no air for two, three, and four. And one last time. Inhale. Two, three, and four, tilt all the way back, lock it in, two, three, and four, and exhale, take all the air out, two, three, and four, and that chin lock, two, three, and four, and let's bring our head to the center, let's rub our palms together, Warm up the hands, put them over our hearts. Get ready for a beautiful practice. Feel free to set an intention for your practice here. As we bring our palms together, take a deep cleansing breath followed by the sound of Om. First, a deep breath in. And now the sound of Aum. Thank you for joining me. Uh, let's put the left hand down and start creating some side to side movements here, left and right. Hold your elbows down a little bit. Create a little more space on that upper lung as you try to look up and generate a slight twist back and forth. Yeah, 
Next time we do that, we can start getting our legs in front of us and get ready for our first cat and cows of the day. So we have our hands directly under our shoulders, our knees under our hips, our spine is straight and neutral. As we inhale, arch for cow. And exhale down for cat. Curl up your spine. Tuck that tailbone in. Push the mat down. And do this a few more times in your own pace. Close your eyes if it feels better for you. See the full expression of your spine change so drastically. See how your shoulders feel with each one. And as you find a neutral spine, again, you're going to raise the right arm out to the front and raise the left leg out to the back. The left la leg is pushing as if it was pushing against the wall. And let's do that a few times. Pretend that you are really pushing against the wall and rocking back and forth here until you find stillness for five, four, three, two, and when you exhale, raise your leg up and just reach your arm towards it. You don't need to touch it. We are just learning and getting our bodies warmed up here, but just aim towards it and then bring it down. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Raise your left arm along with your right leg. And again, swing back and forth so you can really create that pressure on the heel and the foot as if you're really creating an imprint with your foot and same with the with the arm the arm is as if you're in chair the arm is extremely potent here yes and from here as you find stillness you're going to try to reach for that leg with no obligation to find it. Good. And bring it down. And as you find a neutral spine here in table, you're going to curl your toes under and find your first downward dog. Walk your dog, relax your neck. Your neck needs, should be extremely relaxed here. See the difference between your legs. As you find your first downward dog of the day. And from here, you'll bring your knees down close to the ground, hover and shoot up to plank. And we're going to do this 10 times. So go up to downward dog, knees hover, and kick up, kick forward. Up to upward dog, to downward dog, knees hover, and shoot. Inhale, knees hover, shoot. Inhale, knees hover. Shoot. Inhale, knees hover. Shoot forward. Four more. Inhale, knees hover. And breathe. Breathe into those abs. One more. Downward dog. Hover the knees and go forward. 
here we have Chaturanga Dandasana. You can choose to do that with your knees on the ground, or you can choose to do that with them off the ground. Move forward into your toes, push up position, upward dog. Curl your toes back, look up, and downward facing dog. From here, pick your right foot up. You can open this hip, draw some circles with that knee from one side and on the other side. Square that hip forward, kick that right foot to meet the right hand. And we're gonna get into an aer airplane lunge. So first tend to your fingers and as you create strength, airplane lunge. My arms have that similar strength. My legs, my head is being pulled forward and the tension in between my legs is really what's holding me up. Make sure you don't collapse into that front leg because that can hurt your right leg. Great. And now we'll create, we'll go all the way up and twist to the right. And hold here and go all the way up and twist to the right. And let's do that four more times. Find that tension between your legs to hold you up. Don't collapse into that front leg. Two more. Cartwheel your hands down, right leg goes back. Go back into downward dog for two breaths. From downward dog, roll forward. Chaturanga Dandasana with knees on the ground or not, upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Great. Take two breaths here as we get ready to lift our left knee, left leg all the way up. Fold that knee, draw some circles with that knee to one side and then to another. And then square that again and bring that left foot to bring the left, to meet the left hand here. First, tensing my arms in a lunge, in a runner's lunge, create a lot of that tension between the two legs as I rise up. Creating airplane lunge. Trying not to collapse here on this front left groin area. I'm gonna create a lot of that push with that left foot so that we're not collapsing into that front left groin area. Here, rise all the way up and we're gonna twist to the left. Inhale up, twist to the left four more times. One more. And get up and the right foot meets the left as we prepare for our tree. Tree here, we have a neutral spine as we prepare to get that right foot up on the leg. Again here, many variations of this pose. Just make sure you don't put your foot against your knee. You can do that as high or as low as you'd like. You don't want to collapse and bring out this left hip too much. And find stillness here. You can use mudras. Let's 
grow. Well, we'll do, I'm using a lotus mudra here. And what we'll do to create a little bit of movement is we'll just open them and try to create that stability even when the arms are moving. Small movements or closing your eyes can be a good way to make your balancing practice more challenging. Let's do this two more times. When you're coming down, make sure those shoulders are going where they belong, staying low, one more. Great, and as you come in and out of balancing poses, if you're careful to do that, it tends to make them a bit more special, I find. Okay, so now on the right hip, make sure you're not bringing it out too much. And again, here, your tree may be low, maybe uh, with two trunks even on the ground, or you can bring it up. If you have a Bikram practice, some people prefer to have it here at the crease. And again, many variations of this pose. Let's bring that lotus up. I think we're in the mood for spring. <laughs> See what your shoulders do throughout this entire cycle with the hands. Pay attention to them. Two more times. Great. We'll get to the top of our mats. Circle sweep arms all the way up. Bring it down. Hands on the mat, look forward. Hop, skip, jump, or walk all the way to the back of your mat. Let's hold this plank. You can hold this in an elbow plank. You can have your knees on the ground. But while we're here, make sure your hips are low and your index fingers are parallel to each other. That's what's most important. Two more breaths here. Now c go forward on your toes, Chaturanga Dandasana, Upward Dog, and Downward Dog. And here we'll do a Downward Dog twist. So you'll take your right hand and bring it to the outside of your left ankle or your left shin or your left thigh, wherever you can reach. Make sure that left hip stays squared. Good, and bring it back and let's do uh, that on the other side. Left hand to the outside of the right leg or ankle. Make sure you're using that pole to create some rhomboid stretch on your back. Those muscles that get tired when we are on the computer too much. Bring it back. 
And from here, take your chaturanga, lean forward, push up position, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. From here, your right leg goes all the way up and bring it in to meet the right hand as you prepare for your warrior one. That same strength and power in the arms, shoulders are down, and you put your hands on your hips like this. See where they're pointing. If you need more room between your legs to make sure that they're pointing forward, then that's what you have to do. You don't want this. You want this. So if you need more space, that's okay. From here, open up into warrior two. Same thing, except now I want my hips facing forward and a 90 degree angle here or as close to that as possible. Here, let's go post our arms and notice as if you can move back just with this. Let's try to do that a few times. As if someone's gonna push you and you're gonna fall back. This will help you understand where the shoulders and the upper body should be. So here as you stop right with a neutral spine, can you keep that same opening on the shoulders while maintaining a neutral spine? So now the spine is neutral again, but my shoulders are more relaxed. Now let's open it up again. Flip the front palm, reverse your warrior. And bring it back to down to side angle pose. And look all the way up. If you have a bind in this practice, you can do that bind, but this is okay. Good, now bring it all the way up here. And we'll do, for those who remember, our jumping squats. So what we'll do is you have your legs slightly uh, more than hip width apart. And we're gonna squat, and you're gonna open it slightly more, and squat and close. And squat and open, and squat and close. Almost like between the feet and chair and the feet and goddess, and we're switching between those two. So we'll start with the feet and chair, like two fists in between here, a little more than that, and we'll open to goddess. All right, and we'll do three sets of that. So go all the way down, jump, and down. Jump, and in, jump, and out. Jump, in, jump, out. Jump, in, out. You got it. Keep doing your squats. Great. Good. All right, take a break. Give those legs a break. What we'll do while we do that is we have our legs wide in a wide stance, and we're gonna do our half moon pose. So you're gonna swing. If you have a block, great. And you're gonna swing to the side and find your half moon. and breathe. Mm -hmm. 
If you can, start looking towards the ceiling. Good. Come back. And let's do another set of those squats before we do the other side. So feet are a little bit wider than hip width apart. And let's do in and out. In, out. In, out. Feel free to work the arms in there if you need some extra work. I have some great athletes in the studio with me today. Good. Ten more seconds. Good. Normalize the breath. Have a wide stance on the legs. Now the weight goes on the left leg. Have fun here. This is definitely a pose that looks easier than it is. My top foot is flexed as if I'm ready to kick a wall. Try to find stillness. Two more breaths. Good. And now our last set, our last set of the squats. Here we go. This is hard. Stay in your chair. Make it static. But keep it going. All right? Ready? Go. Movement is medicine. Ten more seconds. And good. Go into a forward fold. Wide-legged if you'd like. Circle side to side. Rotate. Find your breath. Here, we'll come into a yogi squat. You can just sit. And this is a great stance to relax in, even in your day to day. Close your eyes. Now you're going to take that right arm and it's going to go around your right shin and you're going to see if you can reach with that left hand towards that, that other hand, the right hand. It may not work. I'll do this so that people in the video can see. It may not work yet. If it doesn't work, you keep your arm here or here or here or you take a belt or a strap and you create that stretch that way. And look up towards your left shoulder. Good. And let's bring it back to center and do that on the other side. 
I'm going to use that left elbow to really push against the inside of that left knee. And I'm using that as leverage. And I go around with that left hand. Right arm goes up and then around. Whether that's with a belt Good. From here, we rise all the way up. Slowly vertebra by vertebrae. As we come to the top of the mat, circle sweep. Our arms up, look up, come all the way down. Halfway lift, hop, skip, jump, or walk. Back to your plank, to your downward dog, sorry. Take a few de deep breaths here. Look forward. Chaturanga Dandasana. Feel free to take it with your knees on the ground. Upward dog. And downward facing dog. Now we'll take that left foot. Bring it all the way up and then bring it to meet the left hand as we get into warrior one on the left side. Hands are up, a lot of power in the arms. Again, create the distance you need between your feet to honor your hips, make sure they're square. Breathe here. Then open up to your warrior two. Here, looking towards the left. And here we'll do the same thing with the arms. Go post your arms. Try to really go back as if someone's really pushing you on your shoulders. And your abs start to tremble a little so that you can see how that shoulder should be positioned even as you bring your abs and your spine back to neutral. Bring those arms back to warrior two. Two more breaths here. Flip the front palm, reverse warrior. And bring it to side angle pose. And here, if you do have a bind in your practice, or you can just do it the regular way. Good, now let's cartwheel all the way back to downward facing dog. Find stillness here. Come into your chaturanga. Bring it all the way down. Upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Hop, skip, jump, or walk to the front of your mat. Bring it all the way up, circle, sweep your arms up, and hands to heart center. Here, we'll do our dancer pose. Here, you're going to bring your right foot and hold it with the right hand. And make sure the knees are in the same plane here. And this is, this may be enough for you. You can hold it from the inside or the outside. If this is good, you can bring your left hand up and slowly start hinging. 
on that left hip. Remember, the hips are still squared. You fall, you get back on. It's just practice. Good. And bring it to center. Bring it down. We'll bring it to goddess. And we'll do a wide legged forward fold here. You can bring your head to the ground, or your head to a block. Hinging on your hips, and we'll come back out in the same way we came in. A lot of strength on the abs, vertebra, right vertebra. We'll rise all the way up as we prepare for dancer on the other side. So the weight is now on the right leg, and we will grab the left foot. You can use a towel or a strap or a belt here if this is comfortable. Raise your right arm up and hinge. Your bottom foot is like the foot of a frog. It's really suctioning and trying to grab the floor. Find the mudra. Find the point in front of you. Find the focus. And bring it all the way back. Great. And here, we'll bring it to a wide-legged stance again. But now we will do our goddess dips. So we'll bring it to goddess. And bring it all the way up. If you can, get your heels off the ground. Great. If you can't, no problem. Dip and bring it up. Bring it down. Bring it up. We'll do this two sets of ten. One more. Good. And here, take some movements. As we get ready for our next set. Good. Goddess stance. Now, if you didn't the last time, See if you can get your heels off the ground. Ready? Dip. Push it up. Bring it down. Up. Down. Up. Great, Mary Ellen. Down. Five more. Good. Good. And here, bring it up to the top of the mat. And let's take a break here. And from here, you're going to lift your right leg up and push with both of your hands. You're going to push on that right thigh. And here, you're going to kick that right leg forward for 10, 9, 8, 7, 
six, five, four, three, two, and one. And now you're going to bring it all the way back to a crescent lunge. And here we will dip for 10, 9, and breathe. Find that same movement in the hips, in the heels that you did for goddess. And that back heel. Four more. Good, and bring it all the way up. Circle, sweep arms up. Look up, bring it all the way down. Hands on the ground. Hop, look up, sorry, hop, skip, jump, or walk to the back of the mat. Downward facing dog. Relax here, relax your neck. Slow your breathing down. Now bring it to plank. Let's hold it for five, four, three, two, chaturanga dandasana, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. On your next exhale, hop, skip, jump, or walk to the front of the mat. Halfway lift and fold. Circle sweep all the way up. Bring your hands to heart center. And now on the left side. So I have my left leg up. I'm pushing with both arms down to create that tension. Then I'm gonna kick this leg out for 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Keep going. Grip that bottom foot like a frog. Two and one and all the way back into crescent. Legs are strong. Again, not collapsing into that front groin. There's a lot of strength in between the legs so that that doesn't happen and those injuries don't happen. And from here, 10 dips. 10, 9, 8, 7, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Great. Bring those legs together and bring that right knee up. Hold it with both your arms, both your hands, and open it out to the side. It's a balancing mood today. Bring that left arm up or out to the side. You can keep that pose holding onto the knee, or you can reach for the toe. The most important part is that you're finding balance in your own way, in your own body. Two more breaths. Transcend. And bring it in. And the way you release, be gentle and be purposeful. Now on that left leg, bring a neutral spine first. Now the weight is on the right. My feet are gripped on the ground. I hold with both my hands on that left knee and slowly open out to the side. You can bring your arms up or you can have it helping you balance 
you can use a mudra. This is a great version of this pose. Nataraja. You can also go for a straight leg. Always remembering those shoulders away from the neck. Find distance. Transcend. Two more breaths. You're doing amazing. And bring it down. If there's any other pose, standing pose you'd like to do, I'm going to take a drink as we bring it down. You guys did great. Circle sweep all the way up, hook up, bring it all the way down, halfway lift, go down, hop, skip, jump, or walk. Let's hold this plank, close out strong for five, four, three, two, and chaturanga, but this time we bring it all the way down and put your left cheek on the ground and just find some deep breaths here to slow that heart rate. Close your eyes. From here, you can go post your arms and fold your your knees, your legs on your at your knees as we prepare for a skydiver. So next time you exhale, you'll go all the way up and try to really lift the tops of the of those legs of those quads off the ground. That's the challenge on their own. Good. And bring it down. We'll do that again, but this time you'll try to reach for those ankles or a bow, and you in inhale, come all the way up, see if you can keep those knees not sprawling out, but somewhat parallel, deep breaths, this is a pose that really benefits from quality breathing, and bring it down. And as you get ready, you can put your belly up, face up, as we get ready to do some abs. Lift your legs so that they're 90 degrees, and we'll do some bicycles. Your hands are in your occipital region. The tops of your shoulders are off the ground. As we'll reach the right elbow to the left knee, and the left elbow to the right knee and alternate. Let's do that for 30 seconds. And you can kick the opposite leg out if that's available to you. Five more seconds. Good and relax. And we can alternate that with a bridge. So you'll bring those both arms by your side. Make sure your feet are parallel and they're not too wide. They're hip width distance. 
and you're going to lift your uh, glutes off the ground and use those heels and the big toe to kick. That's really where the strength to lift the glutes off the ground is going to come from. And hold here for three breaths. See if you can bring your glutes higher. Good, and slowly vertebra, right vertebra, bring it down. And let's do another set of those bicycles. Knees are up, hands in the occipital region. And let's do that for another 30. Make sure the knees are not being brought in towards you. The abs should be doing the work and not the legs. Ten more seconds. Good. Whew. And now we're going to lift that bridge one more time. Except this time, you'll try to lift one of the legs and then the other for two breaths each. So the right leg, see if you can put more strength on that left big toe. <sighs> Bring it down, how nice it is to have both. A lot of strength on that right big toe as we get ready to, on an exhale, lift that left leg up for two breaths. Can you push that left toe down more? And bring it all the way down. Bring your right knee in for when removing pose on the right side. Massage those internal organs. Let's do that on the other side. Good, and bring both feet all the way down. And come to your side, you're gonna be on your side. You have, you have your elbow on the ground and your left hand on your hip, as if you're getting ready to take a photo. And then you'll get your whole side body off the ground for a side forearm plank. Here, you can keep your hands where they serve you best. And breathe. You can lift that left leg off. Two more breaths. And bring it down. And then we'll come to seated so we can get ready to do that on the other side. But before we do, you'll be in a wide legged stance. And you can use, I saw someone use a belt or a strap this way for a forward fold. That can be a really interesting way to do it. To 
protect the inside of those knees. And walk those hands to the right leg. And try to see if you can face your whole body, all those hips, everything towards that right leg. But the left leg is still strong. See if it, there's still strength in that left leg. Good, and slowly walk yourself to the center and to that left leg. Make sure that right glute isn't coming off the ground as you try to reach the right glute is strong and so is the right leg. Good. Here we'll rise all the way up. Bring that right, the left forearm down as we prepare for that elbow plank, um, elbow side plank on the left side. I have my forearm parallel to the top of the mat. My feet are down and grounded and ready. And on an exhale, I'll rise all the way up. We'll rise all the way up. Bring your arms up if you can. Separate your legs if you can. Even if it's an inch, makes it an inch harder. Two more breaths. Good, and bring it down. Great. From here, we will sit down, get ready for our boat. Here, you may choose to have your legs straight if that's available. They may be folded or they may even be on the ground. But the less contact with the ground, and the straighter the legs, the more challenging it will be. Again, here, I'm leading with my chest. Good, Shravya. Leading with your chest first. Yeah, even if the legs don't go as high, I don't want to strain my shoulders. And let's roll the boat. One, let's do it for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax forward. We'll do that one more time. Good. Let's do that boat one more time. You may choose to stay here, but most importantly, your torso is leading the way. And let's row for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Great job. Good, in here, get ready to do a twist to the left side. So you're gonna bring your right leg under your left leg and your left leg over the right. Bring your right arm up, 
start twisting to the left and rotate towards the back of the room. With each inhale, I'm lengthening my spine, making sure that it's not collapsing in favor of a twist. And with each exhale, I'm twisting harder and favoring the twist. A few more breaths here. Good, and let's bring it to center. And do that on the other side. Your left leg goes under the right. The right goes over the left. Left arm goes up. And you twist to the right. You may choose to tend the back hand if it's easier on your wrist or if it helps you create more leverage. Make sure both glutes are on the ground. Sitting bones. A few more breaths here. Great, let it go. And here you can get ready to take your version of pigeon. Um, I will take the traditional version. You may choose to take it lying down. Um, so you have your right leg parallel, your right shin parallel to the top of the mat if possible. You may choose to put a block under your groin area. Keep your body straight and respect how far it's ready to go for you. Make sure you look at that back leg. Take a look. Make sure it's straight. Good, Travia. Yep. Make sure it's straight as you get ready to settle into this beautiful and challenging pose. Couple more breaths. Good. And slowly, let's get ready to do that on the other side back to the neutral spine and bring that left shin now parallel to the top of the mat. It's a pose that takes some time to get into. Make sure you give your body that time. Look back at the back leg. Make sure it's straight. more breaths here. Good. 
now you can bring for those doing the pi traditional pigeon. You can come back to a child's pose. For a breath. And then we'll come into table um, as we get ready to thread the needle. So open that right arm all the way up. Look up. Find a lot of strength in that arm as you thread it under the left and let your left, your right shoulder rest on the mat. Find the opening in the rhomboids in the back of the spine. Slow your breath. Good, and let's bring it back to table. Lift the left arm all the way up and thread it under the right. Your left shoulder giving that beautiful stretch to your upper back. Two more breaths. And here, as we get ready before our final Shavasana, um, we can do, we'd like to do a dolphin so that we can get the benefits of an inversion without necessarily doing a proper inversion. Um, so we have our index fingers are parallel. Our elbows are directly below the shoulder like pillars as we will kick our knees off the ground you can imagine someone pulling, putting a strap directly under your, your hip area and pulling it up. So you're really pushing with those hands. And you try to take three steps towards your elbow. And that will allow a lot of the blood flow to go to your head. Take four more breaths here. Feel that push on the elbow, that push on the index fingers, balancing with that attempt from your feet to get closer. One more breath. And lower down. Get ready to be on your back. Let's do a supine twist to the right. Bring those arms all the way out and bring your knees to the right side. You can use your ankles and your feet over that left knee to create a bit more leverage on this twist. But don't forget about your left shoulder. It should still be on the ground. Couple more breaths here. Good, and let's get ready to do that on that other side. You can use the left foot over that right knee to create a little bit more leverage and more stretch on your outer right leg. <sighs> Two 
two more breaths here. And as we get ready for our final Shavasana, make yourself comfortable. Make yourself warmer if you're in a cold room. Make your clothes, make adjustments that will allow you to be fully relaxed. Your feet are effortlessly open in a natural rotation. Your hands, your palms are naturally facing up. Feel the earth holding you. And feel the effortlessness. You may wish to stay in Savasana as long as you like. For those in the room with me, when you start wiggling your toes, the tips of your fingers, maybe your eyes are letting in a little bit of light in again. You may choose to Go into fetal position with your body on the right side, getting that flush of blood from the heart. You get ready for this rebirth. As you slowly, if you'd like to conclude the class in a seated position, you may choose to do so, or you may stay lying down Find a comfortable seated position of your choice. And we will conclude with a cleansing breath followed by the sound of Om. First, a cleansing breath in. you are. Namaste. Thank you for being with me this morning. Thank you, guys. Thank you.